Imagine a group of patients who have been in persistent vegetative state, PVS or coma, for well over 20 years, their lives maintained by expensive and elaborate machinery. An accidental scientific discovery demonstrates that their brain waves contain information that can effectively and thoroughly lead to a cure for a panoply of mental health disorders, most notably to the healing of all psychotic states, including schizophrenia paranoia. Regrettably, to obtain this information reliably and replicably, one must terminate the suspended lives of many comatose people by detaching them from their life support units. It is only when they die convulsively that their brains produce the aforementioned waves, that their brains release the beneficial information, the information that can be used to create and generate a cure for mental health problems. Should we sacrifice these people for the greater good? This depends, many would say. If the patient does not recover from PVS within one month, the prognosis is bad. Patients in PVS survive for years, up to 40 years, though many die in the first four years of the condition. As long as they are fed, and as long as they are hydrated, they survive. But they very rarely regain consciousness or the ability to communicate it to others if they are in a locked-in state or syndrome. Even those who do recover within days from this condition remain severely disabled and dependent, both physically and intellectually. So PVS, or coma patients, are as good as dead. Others would counter that there is no way to ascertain what goes on in the mind of a comatose person. Killing a human being, whatever his or her state, is morally reprehensible and impermissible. And still, a sizable minority would agree that it makes eminent sense to kill such people, who are not fully human in some critical aspects, in order to benefit hundreds of millions by improving their quality of life and functionality. Remember, we kill the comatose patients, we gain cure for paranoia, schizophrenia, and other mental health disorders. That's a dilemma. There is a hierarchy of rights, some would insist. The comatose have fewer rights than the mentally ill, and the deranged and the defective are less privileged than us, normal, full-fledged, healthy human beings.